Hi, this is Nick with Ten Bell Pod, and here's 10 facts on Razor Rick Bogner. Let me start off this video by saying there's a handful of guys in WWE history that got stuck with an impossible gimmick, and since it was their most publicized run, it's their legacy. Think of Mike Shaw, who you may know as Bastion Booger, who was more than a competent wrestler in Stampede Wrestling, or a Chris Candido, who was able to kick out of his run as Skip, but as one of the great in-ring workers of all time, he was WWF Skip. They never got that repackage or that second or third chance. Rick Bogner is one of those guys, and fans think that he just appeared out of thin air, ruined wrestling, and vanished into the darkness, and that's not the case. Rick Bogner was born January 16, 1970 in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Rick grew up a martial artist, and I believe got a black belt or two. Around 16, he started watching wrestling, and he specifically mentioned a cage match between Ric Flair and Ronnie Garvin for being the driving force for him wanting to get into the business. Rick paid his dues. He started out on the Canadian indie circuit before wrestling in FMW. Rick tagged up with people like Horse Hogan and Tarzan Goto, and they were facing combinations of Onita and Iji Izaki, a.k.a. Hayabusa. But one of the coolest things from his FMW days was his tag team run with the Gladiator, who the kids may know as Mike Awesome. And if you know FMW and you know Onita, you know the kind of things Rick was doing. Street fights, stretcher matches, and of course, barbed wire rope matches. After a stop in Otto Vance's catch wrestling, Rick wrestled in war. In war, Rick worked with and against people like fellow Canadian pal, the Lionheart Chris Jericho, Tenaru, and Otomo Dragon. Bogner worked in ECW. While working in Japan, Rick became friends with Sabu, who found him a spot in EC Dub. In March of 96, Rick working as Big Titan beat Judge Dredd before losing the next day against Sabu. But it was while working in ECW that Rick jokingly did the Razor Ramon impression that would change his life. So how does this joke that Rick assumed would just die in the locker room turn into one of the worst wrestling angles of all time? While Rick was going over a match in the locker room, he was clowning around and broke out his Razor Ramon impression. It was so good that Paul Heyman asked him to do it in the ring. So going out as Slice and Dice Ramirez, he went down to the ring to cut a promo as Razor before his six-man tag against the Dudleys and Hack Myers. There's a couple different stories of how this got back to WWF, but just know it did, and Rick got a tryout and later a callback from Vince McMahon. Rick wasn't super excited to be fake Razor. He wasn't trying to scab or live off Scott Hall's work. He didn't even want to do it. But as a young up-and-coming wrestler, when you get a call from Vince and the biggest wrestling company in the world, you don't have much of a choice. He thought, okay, I'll do this, I'll play ball, it will go how it goes, and then after, maybe I could be repackaged into something cooler. While Rick as Razor would officially debut September 23rd on Raw, his pay-per-view debut came at the 96 Survivor Series, a night that Rocky Maivia debuted. And this is just another example of a terrible gimmick that got repackaged and a second chance and one that did not. Once Fake Razor and Fake Diesel officially flopped, they were sent to Memphis. While still under WWF contract, Rick and Glenn Jacobs got some dates in Mexico's AAA before setting up shop in the USWA. There, the Razor-Diesel tag team would be split after a feud and a Loser Leaves Town match. Rick won but he was more than done with this Razor gimmick, so on an episode of TV, he alunder blazes his Razor gear into a trash can, saying that he's now the free spirit Rick Titan. Once Rick left the WWF, he joined the NWO. In 1998, Rick went to New Japan Pro Wrestling, where in an absurd coincidence, like Scott Hall before him, former Razor Ramon would join Japan's version of the NWO. In New Japan, Rick worked with iconic names like Tasumi Fujinami and the Great Muda, but sadly, Rick ended up injuring his neck. He suffered two hairline fractures of his vertebrae in a match against Shinya Hashimoto, February 15, 1998. While he would work a couple more tours, that was basically it for Rick's in-ring career. After wrestling, Rick got into personal training, he made some money in real estate, and then he got into Buddhism, Taoism, and yoga. He became kind of a motivational speaker, 
And whether you love or hate the guru thing, you have to admit that teaching people to be more self-reflective and to follow their dreams is a lot better than how some wrestlers have chose to spend their post-career. For more pro wrestling history, find Tim Bell Pod on your favorite podcasting app or find us on TikTok, YouTube, or Instagram.